Ooh, what's going on guys arms form coming at you guys today with another video and today is day two of uh, the Detroit Lions training camp 2023 and I'm here to give you guys some of that information if it wasn't for guys like Eric Schlitt John Macaron Tim Twentyman Michael Hara Jeff Risden Jeremy Risen Dave Burkett all those guys putting out that info for us to um, to read and react and uh, if it wasn't for those guys, man, we just wouldn't be able to um, get that info. And so they put that out, and I get it out to you guys as quick as I can. So, you know, um, it started off with, you know, a couple guys still a little bit banged up. Marvin Jones on that NFI list. Apparently he did have a little bit of a back tweak. I know a lot of people were talking about vet rest because, you know, he's like 33 years old. Uh, but, no, he has a little bit of a back tweak. And Dan Campbell says that there are no real rush to rush the old man back. He's not even old, 33, but that's old in NFL standards. And then Hennon Hooker, the, the, the promising uh, rookie quarterback that they drafted in the third round out of Tennessee, still on that NFI list, um, could come back sooner. Who knows what's going to be happening with him, but I, I think they need to take it easy with him. But he is, he is doing some individual work as well. And then Emmanuel Mosley, the cornerback we picked up from the 49ers on the pup. Uh, but Dan Campbell, I think, coming out and saying that they would like to get him back sooner than later. It's, I think they were talking about hopefully next week or week after. So it's good it, It's good because I know he's chomping up the bit to get in there. But it's still going to take it easy too because he can't mess around with those those lower leg injuries. But um, we started off, uh, you know, with Goff going deep. We, we got a nice pass from Jared Goff. Second play on the 11 on 11s. Goff to Raymond. Khalif Raymond, very underappreciated uh, a wide receiver on this Detroit Lions squad, um, blew right by uh, Jerry Jacobs, and uh, beautiful pass, six, end zone, touchdown, so started off nice right there, and then, you know, like I talked about in the previous video that, that you probably see before this one, uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson went down, you know, the, the hybrid safety nickel cornerback that we picked up as a free agent. Um, went down hard, clutched his right knee, went down, he was punching his knee. Um, and it turns out he's going to be okay. You know, like I said in the, in, in the other video, it went from 0 to 100 really quick. Oh, he was going to be out for the season. Then it was only going to be two months. And then he's going to be just okay. He's day-to-day. -day. So as of right now, he's day-to-day. -day. More tests, but no real structural damage to that knee. So he should be good to go whenever. I don't think they're going to rush him back because that knee probably is a little bit tender and he's, and he's going to need some uh, 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 some some care on that knee before they give anything um, a go uh, on him coming back on the field because we need that guy. He, he is a good football player and uh, um, we need a guy like C.J. Gardner-Johnson in that defensive backfield. So, and then, you know, uh, O.C. Ben Johnson throwing darts kind of, you know what I mean, it's getting a little bit boring with that one, but um, <clears throat> Ben used to play quarterback at the college level, I forget what, what, what college he went to, but he was throwing passes in individual drills, and uh, there's, a, there's a video of it too on Twitter, um, he was a little bit of extra mustard when he was throwing the ball to Jameer Gibbs, and they show a video of Gibbs, literally the ball going right through Gibbs' hand, so... Um, he did drop one in the video, so uh, it, it, it happens. Um, you know, what Ben Johnson was trying to do, you know, maybe just throw a little sauce on that and, and, and see how Gibbs handle it. I'm sure he caught every other pass and just, you know, he dropped that one. Um, but Gibbs is working on his fundamentals as, as well and his pad levels, uh, trying to keep it low, trying to keep those pad levels uh, uh, low. So um, he's doing that early work. We already know what type of player he's going to be, but now he's working on those fundamentals and those basics. So that's good to hear and good to see. Um, Montgomery looking good, doing uh, uh, showing some fundamentals on pad levels, doing some rope drills as well too. We talk about that in a bit too. So good to see. It's going to be a nice one-two combination with Gibbs and Montgomery. I'm excited. And Brian Branch, you know, the kid that we picked out of Alabama, 45th overall, I believe it was, second rounder, uh, dropped in, in, in this 2023 draft, which I was very, very shocked that he did, and we ended up grabbing him. Um, he's just a physical kid, you know. Um, he's around the football often. He looks to be in position to deliver hits every single time. He's got really great closing speed. Just a smart, instinct, instinctual player. Um I'm excited for this kid. I'm really excited for this kid, and he's really showing out the last couple days early in camp, and that's what you like to see from him, especially a second-round pick. Um, 
And then uh, he, had a, he, had a, he had another beauty of a pass breakup as well, too, um, against Dylan Drummond. Um, that really riled up the defense as well. He had a couple nice ones, apparently, too. And then Star, Starling Thomas, the, the fifth, making progress. Another UDFA guy that we picked up. Um, got a good size on him. He just, the coaches love him. Uh, Dan Campbell completely raves about him. He's going to have a spot on this team. Um, it's probably going to be special teams right away. He's going to be that fifth corner. You know what I mean? He's, he's just going to be a good player. He's got size. He's got good movement. He's got good awareness. So um, right off the hop, special teams. And that's where they think they he, he's going to flourish to begin his young NFL career. And it was a really good find by Brad Holmes so far. He's going to be good depth for this team. He's going to make the, he's going to make the team. I'm going to call it early. I'm, I'm going to call it really early. It's, it's a little bit of an early call, but he's just got the tools. And um, I'm excited for, for that guy too as well, especially on, on, on special teams. He's, he can fly too. That kid can run. And then, and then some more observations, you know, Denzel Mims is out there, the guy we traded for from the Jets, the wide receiver. Um, he feels like he knows the playbook already. He's getting it down. Um, he was making plays on this Monday. He got open early and often. He was catching balls. Made a really nice fingertip catch. That was a little bit, um, he, was, he was led a little bit too much by Nate Sudfeld. Um, that's going to happen. And um, he was catching. He was catching the ball, man, because, you know, if you talk to a lot of Jets fans and you read some articles, one of the things that they kind of push on or, 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 or talk about a lot with Mims was that he, he had trouble catching the football. He had a bad catch rate um, as a New York Jet, like 47 point something percent. Um, you know, quarterback play goes into that, uh, schemes, play calling. So it's not just all on Mims, but he needs to take responsibility for some of that. And uh, but he was catching everything on this Monday. So, and then I, I guess Mims, Green, Antoine Green, the seventh round pick that we drafted this year, Khalif Raymond, all played well. They're all making plays today. Green really stood out apparently due to his size. He's, he's a big kid like Mims. And Mims is a little bit bigger, I think. But Green, got, he's got that 6'2", 199 pound, 200 pound frame on him. And he shields defenders really well with his size. So, that kid's looking to, you know, to make some noise as well. It's going to be an interesting, uh, 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 interesting choices for this coaching staff if this keeps up with these wide receivers playing well. And it's early. It's it's really early, but it's it's, it's exciting. And then Riley Patterson, the kicker that we brought back, you know, uh, that we had before, he was perfect, five for five today, from thirty to forty-five yards. Even Romo Par Parker Romo, the kid that we picked up too, that played in the XFL. Uh, he was perfect too as well, five for five, similar range. Uh, the, apparently the ball booms off Romo's foot. Um, it just explodes off the uh, off the foot, and the coaches are, are, are get very excited about that. It's, he's a very intriguing prospect, kind of a, a guy that's going to develop. That's that's basically what I, I think he's going to be. Even if he doesn't make the team, the, the, there's rumblings, there's rumblings early and often that he's going to probably be on a practice squad. Because he's just got that nice foot. He, 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 he can bomb it. He can bomb it. He has a leg. <clears throat> and then, um, unfortunately, we got another guy a little bit nicked up. Not Nothing too serious. Jamison Williams, J-Mo, on an end around and was seen walking off the field a little bit gingerly. Uh, you don't want to see that. He did stay on the practice field, though. He didn't he talk to trainers for a bit. Didn't end up going inside, so didn't seem like he was too concerned about the injury because he stuck around. He stuck around and, you know, nobody was really taking care of it. Of it, uh, So it must have been not that serious, but a little bit, you know, they had the Gardner-Johnson uh, thing that just happened prior to that. So they, they, they told Williams, take a seat. We don't want anybody else going down. So they just precautionary. And uh, um, so he just sat there and watched the 11 on 11s, which is fine. And then Tracy Walker, another guy that came back from injury. Uh, had a, a nice interception today, back-to-back -back, um, interceptions for the secondary today. Uh, from yet one from yesterday and another one today. Good to see Walker in the mix, uh, looking fluid. It was a, it was a pass from Nate Sudfeld that he picked off, uh, and then uh, Chase Coda, another wide receiver and undrafted free agent. He made a nice uh, play on securing an onside kick. So good awareness by the big fella from uh, uh, um, Oregon. He's got some decent size to him as well. The Oregon wide receiver. And then Scotty Montgomery, the running back coach that we picked up. And, hey, he's an assistant head coach, too, as well. 
uh, this is this is from Dave Burkett. Um, he really wants to be a head coach someday. They did a little bit of a thing on him. He's very detailed, very motivated, uh, meticulous with his drills. Um, they did the ladder drill. You can actually find it on Twitter. Good, it, it, it's a very good drill, actually, the ladder drill. Works on your agility, believe it or not. I was a running back, and uh, this was a very good drill um, as a running back. So um, you got to keep your pad level low, your head up, ball high, uh, tucked under your arm, ball high, and you got to use your feet, and you're going, and you're chopping back and forth in this ladder drill through through the pegs, in your, through the little square ropes, the little square ropes, it looks like a box, and you, the, the goal is not to hit, not to hit the rope. It's tough. It's actually a really tough drill, and it's a really good drill to work on your agility and um there was uh there, there was gibbs jameer gibbs was out there david montgomery was out there and then mohammed ibrahim and they all looked pretty good they all nicked up the they all nicked up the rope a couple times but montgomery looked like he had the best one and then uh but scotty montgomery the running back coach was very meticulous and he had a couple guys he had, he had gibbs start over i believe and i think he had mohammed start over i believe um and he had some choice words too. He's using some cuss words out there, but not in a in an offensive sort of way. Just as a coach, so um, it's a good drill, and he's very meticulous. And this guy's going to be a good coach. He's got a good room there, man. He's got a good room. There's going to be four, or five good running backs in that room when it's all said and done. So I'm so I'm ex I'm excited. But Montgomery is very well respected um, by his peers and and the players already. This is going to be a good room. I'm just excited about it. So. Um, they were 11th last year in 100, with 128.2 yards per game. You know, a lot of that was Jamal Williams. I don't think we're going to miss a beat. Um, and no shade on Jamal Williams at all. He was great here, but I think we have a better room. And it's going to be fun to watch. And then all the DBs, man. Like I said earlier, Branch, Tracy Walker, they're all making plays out there. Cameron Sutton popping balls out. Pass breakups galore going on right now. Tracy Walker, Brian Branch, all with PBUs. And even guys like Stephen Gilmore. Um, and then, you know, Trevor. Trevor Nowoski, too. He was another uh, UDFA. He's a linebacker, though. But they're all making plays out there. So I really like to see that. And even Joshua Pascal, second-round pick that we picked up last year, deflected a pass at the line of scrimmage. So it's back-to-back, -to -back too, for some D linemen. We had Broderick Martin do it yesterday. Pascal did it today, so I like to see that. And then Jack Campbell, another first round pick, um, a guy we took in the first round pick. Didn't really hear too much about him yesterday. Um, he had uh, uh, him and Rodriguez. I think I'm jumping the gun here, but that's okay. But he, him and Rodriguez did have back to back tackles for loss. Like to see that too from from the two young linebackers. And then um, Campbell was out there explaining why they let Badgley go. You know, with with uh, um, you know with Patterson being here in Romo, he's kind of explaining how Patterson and Badgley are kind of the same guy. Personally, I think it's maybe a money thing. I don't have the contract, their their contracts in front in front of me, but I'm gonna guess that Badgley made a little bit more money. Than Patterson doesn't. That's my guess. I probably should have did a little more homework on that uh, for you guys. But if they're the same kind of kicker, if they're the same kind of kicker. Why would they let him go if it wasn't a money thing? That's that's basically what I what I kind of got out of that. You know, they want to see Patterson go kick more. They probably never should have let him go in the first place, but it happens. But it does happen. Nobody <laughs> nobody's perfect. People make mistakes, but they got him back for cheap, you know, like a seventh round pick if he stays on the roster. So you know, and then they really like Romo too as well, the other kicker. So who who knows? But you know, it kind of sounds like it was a money thing. So I don't know how much more Badgley would be making, but I'm assuming he made he made more. He's a, he's more of a veteran. He's been around a little, a little bit longer, right? So I'm guessing it was a money thing, but I could be wrong. But if they're the same type of guy, that kind of tells me something different. And, and then and then Big V was back out there, Vitai, back to the number one team on offense. Like to see that at right guard. Yesterday he was doing second team. So and then Glasgow was doing second team. So it looks like there's going to be a rotation going in here. Um, they're gonna find out what's going on. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it happens for the next three, four weeks. Who knows? Who knows how this is gonna play out? 
but it seems like they really want to see what's going to happen with, with Big V and Glasgow and matching them up against each other. Uh, so it could be interesting. Um, I'm guessing Big V wins this, but it's still early, like I said. And then the second team O-line was Matt Nelson at left tackle. Coyote, Abel Sika at left guard. Ross, Ross Pierce Bacher at center. Glasgow at right guard. And then Ifedi at right tackle on the second team. And the third team was Obina Ize at left tackle. Logan Stenberg at left guard. Brad Cecil at, at center. Um, a UDFA, I believe. And then Colby Sorzel, a fifth round pick out of William and Mary at right guard. And then Ryan Swoboda at right tackle, another UDFA guy. So a lot of rookies on that third team um, and some depth there. Let's see what happens. Uh, these guys are going to be rotating in and out. And, uh, but our, our, we already know what our number ones are. So, And then Antoine Green, talked about him a little bit earlier too, man. He had the catch of the day, um, according to one of the journalists, I think it was Burkett who said that. He was laying out to catch a seam route, seam route from, from Sudfeld. Great catch. Chase Lucas trailing on the play. It was a seven on seven. You know, Green is looking the part early, even on special teams as the gunner. So, you know, he, he, he he's going to make this team probably too as well. Again, it's a little bit early. But, you know, this is the type of stuff you like to hear early and often. You don't want to hear bad news from... Uh, uh, from these youngsters so excited about Antoine Green and then kickoff and kick return work was going on too first team was you know was was kick return kick cover punt cover guys like Malcolm Rodriguez out there Will Harris Cabinda Anthony Pittman Starling Thomas out there Justin Jackson was the primary kick returner last year it looks like he's probably going to be that again who knows though they had a lot of speed out there. You got Jameer Gibbs out there. You got you got Starling Thomas, Maurice Alexander. You got just speed the burn out there. It's just a very fast unit. This this special teams unit is going to be quick. It's going to be very quick, man. So, you know, so they're taking care of business over there. Dave Phipp, I like what he's doing with that special team unit over there. And then, you know, this is what right here, Camel Rodrigo. I jumped the gun. I don't know why I seen that. I don't know why I said that. But they both put up a pair of tackles for losses. So that's two of them. And, uh, and working on the second team, working against the second team O line. And that's okay. And then Brady Breeze with a sack. I uh, used the, use the quotations because, you know, no um, no real solid contact. And they're not, they're not wearing pads, just, just the helmets, just the helmets and shorts and jerseys. Uh, so it was a. It was a delayed blitz, but Brady Breeze got there uh, with the number twos. And then the offensive rookies making an impact early. This is what we want to hear. Gibbs and Laporta, they're getting big reps with the ones. But, they, but, but, but let's not kid ourselves. Both will be split time, though. You're going to see Gibbs and Montgomery. And then you're going to see Laporta and Wright. You know, uh, who knows if Mitchell does anything. You know, they got Zilstra over there. So they got a pretty stacked stack tight end room no real superstar in that tight end room but they got guys there uh, so there's going to be it's it, it's going to be a committee it's going to be a committee of tight ends it's going to be a committee of running backs it's, it's going to be an exciting offense to watch so both rookies looking really dynamic though laporta is looking the part and gibbs is really looking the part as well too got a nice long game apparently as well too and and, and this is laporta is catching everything so you'd like to hear that and then Colby Sorzlow, the kid that we dropped in the fifth round, he did see some time with the twos. Uh, that, that's a good sign. Work in progress, though. Uh, making a bit of making a making a bit of of noise, getting some opportunities that you know that normally a fifth round pick wouldn't. He's just you know he he played primarily as a tackle in college. He's being moved to guard here. So the kid's got the smarts. The kid's got the physical tools. He's a little bit undersized, um, but he's a technician. He's a good. He's a he, he's a good old lineman. I think he gave up one sack in college in like four years. So he's got the goods. He's got the goods, but he's learning a whole new position. And he's, and he's already looking pretty good. So he's putting in that extra work after practice as well. One on one drills with Levi O, and uh, even Hutch was out there. Hutch looks like he would. The, there was a picture, and it looked like Hutch was doing something on his own. Levi was hitting the bag, but Levi was also working with uh, uh, Colby Sorzel. So guys put in work. You love to see and hear that. Um, Hooker not practicing. Hennon Hooker, the quarterback, not practicing with the team, but he's getting work in. You know, always throwing, fluid in movement. He's looking a lot better. 
um, than he did back in the spring. So progress again, progress, 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 progress for a lot of these guys. And then the RB3 battle, is it settled? No, but you know, the, uh, they got Campbell, Campbell calling Justin Jackson pretty much at least the number three back. He already said it, kind of let the cat out of the bag maybe. Um, they brought him back, like I said yesterday in that video, uh, uh, a re-signing of Justin Jackson. He, he did good here last year. He was part of that good unit. You know, he ran hard, catches the ball. He plays special teams. So this guy's going to be number three, it seems like, already early and often, but who knows? The, everything could change. Um, but it's, gonna, it's a crowded running back room, and I like that Justin Jackson's making a little bit of noise already. But the competition's there. You got, you know, obviously you got um, Justin Jackson, and you got uh, Craig Reynolds, you got Jamar Jefferson, you got um, Mohammed Ibrahim. They released Greg Bell. So it, it's going to be a crowded room, and there's, and, and there's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of talent. So another exciting part of this offense that's I think is going to be top five again. <clears throat> and then um, that's basically it. That was it. Cause my, yeah, that, that was basically it. That was the last that I wrote. Uh, thanks to the guys that put this out. Really appreciate it. And hopefully you guys got some info. Learned something new every day. Just like I did. I love it. Yeah. Good progress for the Lions going on so far. Early. Day two. Day three is tomorrow. I'll try to get it out as quick as I can. But probably be another late video. You know, because it's just stuff going on. I'm working. I got to come home. and It's just, you know. Uh, the videos are coming, though, guys. The videos are coming. We're back in the mix. We are back in the mix with the Detroit Lions football team. I'm excited. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming in and, and, and paying attention and uh, letting me vent with, with, with this team. Just, you know, just let me talk about this this Lions football team that I have a passion for. And I'm excited for this year training camp, man. We're getting closer and closer to kickoff. 44 days now, 44, 45 days. Love it, guys. So one pride, go Lions. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button at the bottom right. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Go to my videos. And don't forget to like, comment, share this out. Let's go, guys. One pride, go Lions. Bang. Woo!